In quantum mechanics, spin is an intrinsic property of all elementary particles. Fermions, the particles that constitute ordinary matter, have half-integer spin. All known elementary fermions have a spin of one-half. Overview, particles having net spin one-half include the proton, neutron, electron, neutrino, and quarks. The dynamics of spin one-half objects cannot be accurately described using classical physics. They are among the simplest systems which require quantum mechanics to describe them. As such, the study of the behavior of spin one-half systems forms a central part of quantum mechanics. A spin one-half particle is characterized by an angular momentum quantum number for spin s of one-half. In solutions of the Schrödinger equation, angular momentum is quantized according to this number, so that total spin angular momentum however, the observed fine structure when the electron is observed along one axis, such as the z-axis, is quantized in terms of a magnetic quantum number, which can be viewed as a quantization of a vector component of this total angular momentum, which can have only the values of plus or minus one half a. Note that these values for angular momentum are functions only of the reduced Planck constant, with no dependence on mass or charge. stern gerlach experiment The necessity of introducing half-integral spin goes back experimentally to the results of the stern gerlach experiment. A beam of atoms is run through a strong heterogeneous magnetic field, which then splits into n parts depending on the intrinsic angular momentum of the atoms. It was found that for silver atoms, the beam was split in two, the ground state therefore could not be integral, because even if the intrinsic angular momentum of the atoms were as small as possible, one, the beam would be split into three parts, corresponding to atoms with Lz equals minus one, zero, and plus one. The conclusion was that silver atoms had net intrinsic angular momentum of one half. General Properties Spin one-half objects are all fermions and satisfy the Pauli exclusion principle. Spin one-half particles can have a permanent magnetic moment along the direction of their spin, and this magnetic moment gives rise to electromagnetic interactions that depend on the spin. One such effect that was important in the discovery of spin is the Zeeman effect. The splitting of a spectral line into several components in the presence of a static magnetic field, unlike in more complicated quantum mechanical systems, the spin of a spin one-half particle can be expressed as a linear combination of just two eigenstates, or eigenspinners. These are traditionally labeled spin up and spin down. Because of this, the quantum mechanical spin operators can be represented as simple two times two matrices. These matrices are called the Pauli matrices. Creation and annihilation operators can be constructed for spin one-half objects. These obey the same commutation relations as other angular momentum operators. Connection to the uncertainty principle One consequence of the generalized uncertainty principle is that the spin projection operators cannot be measured simultaneously. Physically, this means that it is ill-defined what axis a particle is spinning about. A measurement of the Z component of spin destroys any information about the X and Y components that might previously have been obtained. Complex phase Mathematically, quantum mechanical spin is not described by a vector as in classical angular momentum. It is described by a complex valued vector with two components called a spinor. There are subtle differences between the behavior of spinors and vectors under coordinate rotations, stemming from the behavior of a vector space over a complex field. When a spinor is rotated by 360 degrees, it transforms to its negative, and then after a further rotation of 360 degrees it transforms back to its initial value again. This is because in quantum theory the state of a particle or system is represented by a complex probability amplitude psi, and when the system is measured, the probability of finding the system in the state psi equals psi 2 equals psi asterisk 
xi, the square of the absolute value of the amplitude. Suppose a detector that can be rotated measures a particle in which the probabilities of detecting sim state are affected by the rotation of the detector. When the system is rotated through 360 degrees, the observed output and physics are the same as initially but the amplitudes are changed for a spin one-half particle by a factor of minus one or a phase shift of half of 360 degrees. When the probabilities are calculated, the minus one is squared, two equals one, so the predicted physics is the same as in the starting position. Also, in a spin one-half particle there are only two spin states and the amplitudes for both change by the same minus one factor, so the interference effects are identical, unlike the case for higher spins. The complex probability amplitudes are something of a theoretical construct which cannot be directly observed. If the probability amplitudes rotated by the same amount as the detector, then they would have changed by a factor of minus 1 when the equipment was rotated by 180 degrees which when squared would predict the same output as at the start, but experiments show this to be wrong. If the detector is rotated by 180 degrees, the result with spin one-half particles can be different to what it would be if not rotated. Hence the factor of a half is necessary to make the predictions of the theory match the experiments. Mathematical description. NRQM the quantum state of a spin one-half particle can be described by a two-component complex-valued vector called a spin or observable state of the particle are then found by the spin operators Sx, Psi, and Sz, and the total spin operator S. Observables when spinors are used to describe the quantum states. The three spin operators can be described by two times two matrices called the Pauli matrices whose eigenvalues are plus or minus h2. For example, the spin projection operator Sz affects a measurement of the spin in the z direction. The two eigenvalues of Sz plus or minus h2 then correspond to the following eigenspinners. These vectors form a complete basis for the Hilbert space describing the spin one-half particle. Thus, linear combinations of these two states can represent all possible states of the spin, including in the x and y directions. The latter operators are, since s plus or minus equals sx plus or minus is e, sx equals one-half and psi equals one-half i. Thus, their normalized eigenspinners can be found in the usual way, for Sx, there, for Psi, there, RQM while NRQM defines spin one-half with two dimensions in Hilbert space with dynamics that are described in three-dimensional space and time. RQM define the spin with four dimensions in Hilbert space and dynamics described by four-dimensional space-time. Observables is a consequence of the four-dimensional nature of space-time in relativity. Relativistic quantum mechanics uses four times four matrices to describe spin operators and observables. Spin is a consequence of combining quantum theory and special relativity. When physicist Paul Dirac tried to modify the Schrödinger equation so that it was consistent with Einstein's theory of relativity, he found it was only possible by including matrices in the resulting Dirac equation, implying the wave must have multiple components leading to spin.